to the mining industry, expect reforms radical ones. Exhort all concerned agencies and local government units to uphold the concept of intergenerational responsibility in exploring and, and the utilization of our mineral wealth, protection, and preservation of our biodiversity, anchored in the right to a balanced and healthy ecology. We will be coming out with a proposed policy reinventing mining that will spread the benefits for the people without compromising the environment and natural resources of the country. Change has come. Better. Bolder. Stricter. And with a force like this, we look forward to a more dynamic mining industry, bringing back its luster and shedding its light onto the veins that sustain it, the environment and the people. Because for once, we see a government that genuinely cares, acts, and gets the job done. Guided by the commitment to uphold responsible mining, the Philippine government promotes rational exploration, development, utilization, and conservation of our resources in areas scientifically identified as having high mineral potential out of the country's 30 million hectare land area. This includes the nickel-rich lands of Zambales, Palawan, Agusan del Norte, Surigao del Norte, and Surigao del Sur. The gold-laden terrains of Benguet, Masbate, Camarines Norte, Davao del Norte, and Agusan del Sur. And the polymetallic reserves of Benguet, Cebu, and Zamboanga del Norte. In terms of active projects, And whether the projects operate at a large or small scale, these industry players abide and are bound by the laws established by the state to promote a new approach to mining. One that entails enhanced responsibility and accountability, by which we reap the benefits of our God-given mineral wealth for all stakeholders, families and communities and the nation at large. in connecting the countryside to cities by roads and bridges, in powering up technology, and in the sustenance of our daily lives, in the medical field, agriculture, defense, and even aerospace. How the industry helps build the foundation for the future through investment, employment, and assistance to communities is something that deserves proper recognition. How does the Philippine mining industry carry out these practices? Before any part of an area gets developed, there are strict regulations and assessment that ensures companies are guided by the core values of safety, environmental enhancement, sustainability, responsibility and inclusion allowing them to create value and improve lives. The cycle begins with prospecting and thorough exploration. The process continues with development and construction where two methods are employed, surface mining and underground mining. Which minerals are mined using these methods and how is it done? Shallow, large deposits like copper chromite and gold are mined using surface mining method. Nickel deposits which are shallow and thin are also mined from the surface. Surface mining are divided into several types. 
quarrying, which gathers building materials like limestone for cement from an open pit mine. Contour or strip mining, where surface layers are removed to reveal the ore underneath. And open pit mining, which is considered globally as the safest mining method. Surface mining begins with a side cut to the deposit. Benching is then used to ensure safety and continuity. When a surface mine is mined out, it may be rehabilitated to become a recreational lake. Thin, shallow deposits like nickel laterites are extracted using the contour or strip mining method. Again, benching is used to ensure safety. At this stage, progressive rehabilitation is done to make sure the mining footprint is kept to a low size. Full rehabilitation is done at the end of mining. If progressive rehabilitation was already done during production, only a small area remains to be rehabilitated. Meanwhile, deep, large deposits like copper and chromite are mined using underground mining method. Deep deposits are accessed using shafts and ramps. The deposits are developed to prepare it for eventual production that is safe and continuous. As mining continues, backfilling, another form of rehabilitation is done and the surface is kept intact. At the end of mining, the underground mine is rehabilitated. Whether a mine uses the surface or underground method, one thing remains certain. These methods ensure that all post-mining lands are rehabilitated and still remain useful because mining is temporary land use. Considered as one of the most mineral-rich countries worldwide, the Philippine economy counts on a regulated mining industry that serves as a catalyst for socio-economic development of its host regions. In fact, recent reports highlight the contribution of mining and quarrying to gross regional domestic product. With 34.4 billion pesos in taxes and royalties on a national scale and 4.1 billion dollars in forex contribution. Figures that not only account for revenues but also translate to countless opportunities for the communities. A more responsible and an accountable approach is always considered to help ensure environmental care happens during the interconnected stages of mining activity. It also paves the way to a better future through continuous prospecting and exploration of a potential trillion dollars worth of untapped mineral wealth for sustainable development. That despite misconceptions and negative perceptions, mining companies stick to the game plan. To get the work done, go beyond compliance and give back more than what the new mining law mandates. Where there was hardly no economic activity in mining areas before, the industry aimed to provide medical and educational assistance to host communities. Where before there were none, mining has generated jobs and livelihood provided public infrastructure such as roads and bridges, drainages and water supply, and let these multiply in ripples. Altogether, this makes the Philippine Mining Act of 1995, otherwise known as Republic Act 7942, one of the most advanced, if not the most advanced mining legislation in the Asia-Pacific region. Its environmental and social provisions is at par with the mining laws of Australia, Canada and the United States.
and operates in view of the four project imperatives. Technically feasible, environmentally compliant, socially acceptable, and financially viable. It also raises the bar in all areas of performance, setting the standards in Philippine mining practices by adhering to International Environmental and Safety Standards or ISO certifications. and engaging in the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, or EITI. But more than reaching new performance milestones, this drive to go beyond is anchored on the genuine desire to give back and contribute the sustainable development of communities and stakeholders. It's embedded in our DNA to save lives through disaster response initiatives and value-creating engagements drive programs, to uplift lives through educational assistance, to strengthen a community's velocity of money and enhance people's purchasing power, and other humanitarian aid missions. More than that, mining companies go the extra mile in so far as marine protection and integrating biodiversity conservation in mine rehabilitation are concerned. And while the old mining law focuses more on economic parameters, the new law promotes socio-economic development through the Social Development and Management Program, preserves our natural resources via the Environmental Protection and Enhancement Program, and commits to maximize the contributions of mining to the national economy. And in support to the policies of the Duterte administration, new policies and standards are being put in place to ensure that in the practice of new approach to mining, everybody is more responsible and accountable. An old adage says the greatest achievement of the human spirit is to live up to one's opportunities 
and make the most of one's resources. The key is in taking steps towards environment protection through sustainable extraction and utilization of our resources and a better understanding of the good that it does to nation building. Wala pa moabot ang mina. Grabe kalisod ang among panginabuhi sa una uh, pinakalisod kay manguha og way oriantok. Nakatabang ka na mo ang minahan. Nakauswag ang among tribo. Miangat. Um, I'm actually very bagilat. One of the best opportunities na binigay na Oceana Gold, hindi lang sa akin, kundi sa mga youth, sa community, ay yung scholarship para sa mga kabataan. So, nung nag-aaral ako, um, I was a scholar of Oceana Gold sa mining engineering. Uh, with the opportunities that Oceana Gold gave me. I was able to provide for my family. I was able to support my sister and my brother in school. Kada ko nakatabang sa amo, sa amo kami nabuhi, dinhi kami magkuan, dinhi kami maka baton sa pag pananom para sa amo pamilya. Ah, dili. Dili lang ayo puta mo nang ipadma, ito may ning kay Wala nang hold-upan dito dahil may hanap buhay na rin ang mga tao. Ako si Pinky Simbag, isang English teacher ng Palo 19 National High School, Tampakan, South Cotabato, at naging former scholar din ako ng SMI. Masasabi kong makatutulong talaga ako upang hubugin ang mga kabataan o ang susunod na henerasyon. Dahil nakapagtapos ako ng aking pag-aaral at ipamulat sa kanila, na ang kahirapan ay hindi hadlang upang taparin natin ang ating mga pangarap.